Well guys, I've said it before and I'll say it again. It is always something. Every time we get something fixed around here, every time something uh, gets knocked off the project or the honeydew list, something else breaks, man. Last night, we host a small group at our house every other Tuesday night and uh, went well, it was, it was a great little small group. Um, afterwards, cleaning up, getting ready for bed and we hear this really loud pitched ringing noise, like a really loud high pitched noise. And we're like, where the heck's that coming from? And it's pretty funny because we were scouting all in our bedroom and, and towards my office area where we were hearing it coming from. Thought it was maybe a TV that I got in my office. Turn that off, nope, that's not it. We're looking around, finally look outside and I see a bright red light that we'd never seen before on the outside of the house. And turns out it was coming from that thing way over there. And I'll show you guys closer in a minute. Our septic tank alarm went off. And about two years ago, I replaced the pump in that thing. And I have a suspicion that the stupid pump's gone out again. So basically I installed a float alarm because when we moved in, uh, there was no, no type of alarm whatsoever. Your alarm was that your yard was filled with water because the septic uh, sump pump wasn't working. So I got that all situated and I'll show you guys that here in a minute. But that's the first time the alarm's ever actually gone off. So what that means is that the water level is getting too high in that secondary uh, basin for the septic system, which means the pump's not doing its job. So it's likely that the stupid pump is out, which means we're going to have to replace it. I'm going to have to pull it and try to find out what's going on with that thing. Maybe it's gummed up. Maybe uh, it's got some material or something like that in there. It's not a fun job, guys. Um, but it's if, if you guys have ever had septic work done, you know it is really expensive to have somebody come and work on it. And a little pump issue, that's pretty easy to replace. You know, it's a smelly job. Somebody's got to do it, right? So what we did is I've got a an outlet here on the outside of the house that is on a uh, GC, GCFI, GCFI. I, I can't ever get the acronym right. It's a ground fault interrupt uh, circuit that is hardwired. I've got some underground conduit that goes over there and that's what operates the power for the pump as well as the alarm. I, in ideal situations, you would actually have those on independent circuits because if uh, it shorts, your alarm's not gonna go off, but that's just what we had to work with at the time. So I wired it, I figured something's better than nothing. So that's where we're at. So alarm went off. What I did last night is told, told Beautiful, hey, limit your water use. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna just go ahead and break that circuit, cut it off. That way we don't have to worry about this thing keeping us up all night and, and uh, beeping again. And we're gonna have a look at it and see what's going on. More than likely the pump's shot and we're gonna end up having to replace it. And if so, I'll show you guys how we do that. Well, I'm gonna put this, I'm gonna turn this back on and we're gonna see if there's water in there and if it's still beeping or not and if it actually goes down. Yeah guys, so this is what I'm talking about. I got this this bad boy right here. It's a great little alarm system if you guys need one for your septic tank or, or any area really where you need a water alarm. This is a great little setup here. And you can take this cover off and if we replace the pump, I'll show you, but you can take this cover off. Pump goes in one side, the alarm hooks up to the other and you, you got your in, input uh, electricity, uh, 120 volts on this one going in. And it's got a little float switch. And if that float switch goes up, this thing lights up pretty bright and very loud beep. And that's what it looks like. If I had to guess, it's gonna be an impeller problem in the pump because you can actually hear it running. You can feel the vibrations on the side of this thing and you can see water movement down there, but the water doesn't seem to be getting any lower. I'm gonna give it a little bit more time just in case. We did run a lot of water last night, but we haven't had this issue before, so I suspect that there's a problem. So I plugged it back in and I let it run for about 45 minutes, maybe closer to an hour, just to see if the water level was actually going down or not, and it's not. It's exactly where it, is, where it was when we started. So I'm gonna have to pull this thing out.
What's up guys, it's been three days. We went and got all the parts that we needed from our local Lowe's, got a new pump. I decided I'm gonna go ahead and replumb the whole thing because you know, plumbing parts are cheap, might as well make it nice, new and shiny. At least it will be for a little bit, right? Um, what I think happened, because I did a little troubleshooting off video, what I think happened is the check valve, this guy right here on the top, if you, you guys don't know what a check valve is, it basically uh, ensures that water only flows one direction. So you push water through it in one direction. Uh, the, the pressure from the water, there's like a little spring-loaded flap in there that pushes the flap closed, uh, the valve closed, so that water won't go back out. And what I think happened is that check valve is busted. And so what was happening is the pump was pumping water into the drain bed, which is elevated. And as soon as the water level got low, the float switch would turn the pump off and then the water would just pour right back into the basin and then the pump would turn back on and then it's a never-ending cycle so i think what happened was the pump just got burnt out i think it's weak the pump still works but it barely barely pumps when it's not connected to anything it's pouring out water fine but when it's connected it's not pumping so i think that i think it just got worn out from being run over and over again this is one of those things it's in the ground you can't hear it you can't see it so you don't really have a way of knowing that it's running constantly and so I think that's what happened. We'll find out. I got a new check valve. I got new uh, piping and a brand new pump. We're going to pull this one out. I'll show you guys what the old one looked like. I'll show you guys uh, the way we're going to plumb the new one and a couple of uh, tips and tricks on that. We're going to put it back in and if all goes well, we'll have a working pump again. So I've got all my wires loose here that run down to the pump and the, and the uh, safety switch for this. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a hacksaw and I'm going to cut this pipe that goes out to the drain field right here on this side of that check valve. And the new check valve is actually going to connect via a, uh, what do you call them, pipe clamps like that. So I'll be able to just latch right onto that. So I'm going to cut this off and I'm going to pull it out. So check this out, guys. I pulled the pump and there's actually another check valve right here. And wouldn't you know it, that check valve doesn't work either. I pulled this thing, I pulled this pipe out. I'm, I already cleaned my hand, I'm not gonna do it again, but I pulled this pipe out and the flap stuck open here. It doesn't need two check valves. And But what are the odds of two check valves failing? I guess pretty good, because that's what happened. So typically you'd only have one check valve, one here or one here. And so when we replace this, I'm gonna have, this is just gonna be a straight pipe. We're gonna go an angle. There's gonna be a check valve right here and that's what's gonna connect it into the drain field. I got a quick tip for you guys because I've done this before the, the painful and difficult way. Look how small this pump is compared to that pump. That's a, This is a Zoller, I think is how you say it. Much better brand pump. It's a lot smaller physically, but it has actually higher horsepower than that one. Now the gallons per minute is about 60 on this one versus 90. So that may attribute to the uh, size difference. But these are good little pumps, but you see the base on the old one has big legs to keep it up off the ground. This one does not have a really tall base on it, which is fine for our application here. It's just pretty much gray water or whatever you want to call it. Um, but the height's going to be different. So if you were to want to reuse the plumbing that you had, it's not going to match up because there's at least, I don't know, probably three inches of, of difference between uh, the inlet there and the inlet on this one. So your pipe up here is going to be three inches shorter. So what I'm going to do is, and that's another reason to replumb it, I think it's because it's, it's pretty easy. It's not a whole lot of effort is leave this all intact, put the new pump right next to it, plumb it to the, to the same height. And then, you know, when you drop that thing in, it's going to turn just fine uh, at the angle you need it to, to go to the drain bed. So I've got it plumbed in. That's what it looks like. So you got a straight run, you got an angle, check valve here make sure you check the uh, flow direction of your check valve don't put it on backwards guys i've heard about people doing that before fortunately I, I have yet to do that but check the flap make sure it works and make sure it's going the right direction i the next thing we're going to do is it's called a weep hole and you don't have to do this but it's good practice and a lot of the senior plumbers like i know a guy who owns a plumbing business and he recommends it that you do it so basically what you do is you take a drill bit around 3 16 so it doesn't have to be exact and what you're going to do is you're going to come up roughly about even with the uh, top of your pump. And you're going to drill a hole at about a 45 degree angle. And what that does is it, it, it helps air get out of this pipe. So what can happen is something called air lock. And basically it's where like a, a pocket of air comes, gets in, in, your, in your pipe somewhere. 
and the pump is going to be working but it can't push the air out because too much air is accumulated in there a weep hole what it's going to do is it's going to allow the air to escape and you want it angled down because when you put your pump down there you don't want water spraying out also don't angle it towards your pump you know that's just more stuff to to get on your pump more corrosion over time so i like to do it just kind of right off to the side here at like i said at about a 45 degree angle and what that's going to do is keep that air from building up in that line and yeah a little bit of water is going to going to splash out of that but the pump is strong enough to continue to to uh, keep pumping the water up even though a little bit's going to shoot back out through that weep hole it's not going to have much of an impact and like i said a lot of the pros do this so i'd recommend you do that if you're going to take the time to replace your pump so here's the finished setup make sure to zip tie to just to tidy up your wire so it's not just floating around in the tank and get get stuck or, or bound on something either when you're dropping it in or pulling it out so i just put one uh vertical one horizontal here I'll show you guys that weep hole too. I put it about right here and this is, you can't tell by the camera, but this is at a 45 degree angle. So it's gonna shoot any air and water out like about at an angle like that. Moment of truth. I'm about to turn the electricity back on and hopefully that basin starts draining out. What do you think, Max? What do you think, buddy? Excuse me, bud. Oh, fail, guys. Y'all see that? Not tight enough. Well, on a good note, we know the pump worked, right? <laughs> All right, let's try it again. I'm gonna stand back this time, almost got splashed. Well, I hear the pump flowing, I hear water flowing, so that's a good sign. It's really hard to tell if the water level is dropping immediately because there's a ton of water in there. So I'm gonna have to give it a little bit of time. Gave it a few minutes, went and mowed a little bit just to kill some time and it is draining, it's going slow. It's gone down about that much in about 20 minutes. It's a lot of water and it's a pressurized field. So that pump's gotta work pretty hard for all that excess water. If it takes way too long, what I may do is just drop a little utility pump in here and run a hose out to the far side of the yard and pump it out that way. But I think it's gonna be just fine. So anyway, I'm happy. I'm glad it wasn't a drain bed issue. It pumps in there, it's rocking and rolling. And one less thing on the to-do list, guys. Appreciate y'all watching. If y'all have any questions about what I did here or any recommendations for next time, maybe I did something wrong, let me know, guys. Feel free to uh, comment down below. Appreciate you guys watching and we'll catch you on the next video.